One of the most eagerly anticipated cameras of recent months was the Fuji X106, a stylish compact dripping with analog retro chic design style. It mirrors a movement that has been growing for a while. Photographers are looking back to move forward and vintage aesthetics are back in fashion. With this in mind, there's never been a better time to spend a few minutes looking over your bank of images and maybe trying out some bespoke image editing to give tired everyday frames a new lease of life and a vintage makeover. Analog imagery carries certain characteristics, high saturation, increased contrast and delicate toning, all of which can be applied with precise control in Affinity Photo 2. So let's get started. The secret to most of this technique is to work with Affinity Photo 2's vast adjustment layers. These are advantageous, not only because you can apply big changes to the frame, but also because they allow you to work in a non-destructive manner, meaning if you make a mistake, you can simply delete that layer without damaging the main image. With your image loaded up in Affinity Photo's Photo Persona, head to the Layers panel and select the Adjustments icon, which is identified by a half white, half black circle. Scroll down and from the long list of options, select Curves. A dialog box will appear and you'll see a histogram that looks rather complicated, but don't worry too much, we're going to take control of the colour channels. And First of all, we're going to select Master and change this to Red. Now we're going to draw out a rough S shape using the mouse. So click once up here, drag up, and down at the bottom of the histogram, click and drag, and that's our rough S shape. Now we're going to change from the red channel to the green channel, and we're going to repeat this step. Draw out the S curve, and as you'll see all the time, the tones in the frame are changing. Okay, our next channel is blue. But this time, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to reverse the S curve. So instead of dragging up, we're going to drag down and the reverse here. And that gives lots of retro tones to our frame. So what's next? Well, we're going to head back to the layers panel. We're going to click on the adjustments icon one more time. And we're going to select brightness and contrast. And this is because retro frames often have a heavy contrast tint. Now you'll see this dialog box has appeared and there's two simple sliders, one for brightness and one for contrast. And if you ramp the contrast up by dragging the slider to the right, that adds even more retro feeling to our frame. I think around 32% is right for my image. So retro frames typically have a vignette around the border, a throwback to the foibles of less than perfect lenses of the day, and this effect can be recreated too. Head back to the layers panel, click on the adjustments icon, but this time select HSL from the drop down options. When the dialog box appears, you'll see three sliders, hue, saturation, and luminosity. Find the luminosity slider and drag it all the way to the left, and our screen will fall into darkness. But don't worry, we're going to fix this now. Head back to the Layers panel and find the Mask Layer option. Click on it and a mask will be created. Make sure it is paired to the HSL layer. We don't want it on the Brightness or Curves Adjustment layer. So with this selected, we're going to head to the Toolbar and select the Paintbrush tool. And the keyboard shortcut for this is B. Make sure the brush is set to black so it paints out the pixels. And you can change the size of the brush using the square bracket keys. Now a tip for this, a large brush works quite well. So start painting out the pixels from the center outwards to the corners. And what we're aiming to do is just leave a little bit of darkness in the corners of the frames to create that vignette. Okay, so this is without the vignette and this is with the vignette. And as you'll see, it just sort of darkens down particularly areas like this um, fire exit sign here. So that works quite well. So let's just take a moment and look how far we've come in this technique. We've kicked off the retro fields by adding the curves adjustment. We've ramped up the brightness and contrast, and we've added a vignette to give that final touch. All we need to do now is head up to the top of the interface and find the file menu, scroll down and click export. And when this dialog box appears, you see you can change the format, whether it be JPEG, TIFF or PSD. There we go, that's how to add a retro makeover to your frame. Enjoy adding a vintage effect to your frames and I'll see you next time.